Good morning, Phoenix City and Russell County, Alabama, and welcome to another episode of Vets View. Today we have Mayor Eddie Lowe of Phoenix City, Alabama as our guest today, and we're going to be talking about some of the things that the City of Phoenix City, in conjunction with the American Legion, is doing for veterans. So we're, I want to start out first by uh, having the mayor to say hello and just tell us a little about your uh, career of playing football and stuff and bring us up to where you are right now today. Thank you, Leroy. I really appreciate you having me on your show. I really appreciate that. Uh, and, and I take it in great stride because it's a way that we can communicate to our citizens of some of the things and vision that we have for Phoenix City. And, and you know, it takes some time, but we will get there. But I am delighted to be here and thank you for that. Uh, and since you want me to talk about my little football career, I uh, Graduated from Central High School in 1978, played for uh, Coach Wayne Travitt, who's a, still a mentor of mine, who's still living, and um, got a chance to uh, get a scholarship because I wasn't that big. I'm bigger now than I ever have been, and uh, I didn't go to the University of Alabama at first. I went to the University of Tennessee in Chattanooga. Uh, uh, Alabama and other big schools said I was too small, so I went to play at UTC, played up there a semester. Asked for a transfer, went to Alabama, played there. Uh, started for two years. I had to sit out a year because I was redshirted because I played at a previous college. Uh, played, started two years at the University of Alabama. Wound up playing my senior year, uh, 1982, which I was the last permanent team captain for uh, Coach Bryant, okay. uh, uh, which is a big honor. Uh, and I didn't even realize it until Jeremiah Castillo brought it to my attention, but it. I guess it is to, to be able to play for him and being his last permanent defensive captain. Steve Mott, who was a friend of mine, uh, who played with the Detroit Lions, uh, was the offensive uh, permanent captain. So I guess that is something they won't ever take away from us. And then got a chance to go play in the CFL and play nine years with Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Uh, and uh, when I finished playing there, came back home where I wanted to be and glad I'm here and never had the idea or thought that I would be the mayor, but I would tell you I, I'm enjoying it and I'm grateful that a majority of the people put confidence in me and I don't take that lightly uh, to have won a second term. So I am the mayor of uh, Positively Phoenix City and uh, having fun and don't regret it, but it's never been my goal. And like I said, if people were telling me or asking me this 10 years ago, I would have told them they were out of their mind. But nevertheless, I'm here and, and grateful to be here and having fun. Okay, great. Now, the reason I ask you that is because, you know, we have a lot of new people moving in, yeah. Army and just retirees because Phoenix City and Russell County is so growing. So you think about that. I don't, I, don't so, yeah, I see your point. So That's I wanted them to point. know a little bit about you and that you are from Phoenix City. Originally. Yeah, re reared and born and reared raised and born. here. And so uh, now we're just going to talk about some veterans issues as far as starting out with the Veterans Park that we plan to build here and that we're working on. So I want to give it to you and let you run with it. I, I will say this, uh, Leroy, and you know this. Uh, when I first uh, got into office and I was elected, uh, I had a vision along with some other people to, to really honor the veterans. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, if it was not if it was not for veterans, and you know people like you and other veterans, uh, you and I could not peacefully be having this conversation. So, it's things that we take for granted that people have given the ultimate cost right. to to be able to make it better for us, and this is an example of it. So we are grateful of that. But any time a person signed on the dotted line to serve any of our branches of services. Uh, as you and I have talked about this, is they are a hero. Whether they make it back or not, they're still a hero. And, uh, and ultimately, the ones that paid the ultimate sacrifice uh, for, for us are truly heroes. And, and when you look at veterans and you know, you're looking at trying to do things for the city, which is part of my goal and should be the goal of any mayor, where you can grow and have prosperous thing and have quality of lives that create uh, a return on, on investment where you can make money to have a better quality of life for people. Well, we came up with this idea, and it's been four years ago. This November would be five years. 
and uh, it's, it's moving too slow, as exactly. you know, and it, it is moving so slow that it can frustrate us, and it has frustrated us. But we had this idea of the bill, the Homish Veteran Park, that pays homage to all five branches of services uh, of this country. But what we wanted to do, and thankful to you all in this post, uh, we were able to get a, uh, a list of every Alabamian mm -hmm. uh, that has given, that have given the ultimate price, the ultimate cost, uh, while they were in action for us to have this meeting and have our veteran. And uh, what we wanted to do is create this park, and of those five branches of services, have a monument with those person's name on it, whatever branch of the service that they were in, uh, the ones that gave their lives and active duties for us, have we have that list to put their names on that monument of branch of service that they served in. Uh, and we have that list and unfortunately it grows and so I have to get a new one for you. And I have to admit this, the one you've given me two, and I probably can't go just put my hand on either one of them right now because it's been that long. But I do know I can count on you to get the yes, other one. Yes, you can. But uh, uh, we wanted to create, have this park, paying homage to those persons who's given the ultimate price, but also tied in for for an economic impact where we can pay homage to those persons where we can have their family members to come here to the Phoenix City, where we can make a long weekend out of it, where we get the people from Washington and the people from uh, the state of Alabama to come down to help us pay homage to them and create some festivities for that entire weekend in honoring those people. And that's the vision that we put out there in the price tag at that time, as you know, was $6.5 million, where you know things uh, has gotten right. better, so that's going to be higher. But uh, the city can't just foot the full bill. So what we did, and we're thankful that we've created this partnership with you all to kind of swap buildings, and we got to work out some details, as you know, to, uh, to make sure that it's not hurting you all because our right. plans is to make, move this building, which is right here by Whitewater Avenue where everything is happening, and uh, swap this building with the uh, Post 135 here, American Legion, build them a building at the, uh, where the old Cobb Hospital used to be, which is one of the highest sites uh, in the city, and call this Homish Veteran Park where well, we can pay tribute to this with a nice reflection pool, build a nice building for you all that that hopefully, and it will generate income for you all, all right. and hopefully for the city where as people wants to use this building. Exactly. And because as of today, we have no building big enough where we can sit 500 people. We just don't have it, but that's a good problem to have and it gives us a reason to build something. But we want to do that. We have this partnership with them and that we're going to swap location. We're going to build them a building. We can use this area here for retail to, to sell and have an income producing business here. But it's just it's taking longer than what we've hoped. But it will get done. Done. It is going to get done. And we have some plans to get that done. And, and I guess I'll let Leroy finish talking about that and, and chime in where I'm. And, and, and one of the things, Mary, and you know that I, I am a veteran, yes. and I'm very passionate about this you ever since be. we got started. So what, the thing I like about you is, is if we can agree to disagree exactly. and, and uh, continue to work together. Because it's not about us. It's not about it's us. About it's about, about the veterans exactly. and, and what we're trying to do to help our community grow. Exactly. And, you know, as I talk to people, uh, especially like the Board of Realtors in Phoenix City, and they talk about the economic impact that it's going to have on Crawford Road and coming yes. up 13th Street, uh, but once that uh, building is built and the Veterans Park, it'll be all kind of businesses popping up down there wanting to sell uh, uh, dog tags or different yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. And it's going to do a beautification uh, for our neighborhood coming up. And, and you know, and I, and I was waiting on that to come up. I didn't want to put it out there first. But you know, in the very first meeting, the vision is where this would be a catalyst for that area and also for the 1.9 mile stretch which is from 280 Crawford Road mm -hmm. to right down here at Whitewater Avenue. 
That's a 1.9 mile stretch. And hopefully the vision is that the catalyst will be the Homage Veteran Park where these businesses will start a revitalization for that whole area. And I've always used this example that hopefully, in, whether we're around or not, we may not be, but it's a long-term goal. But what's wrong with getting it started now? Right. That's our responsibility. Yeah, exactly. And what I'm hoping is that in the future that you can have people in, that will walk that 1.9 miles and not realize they walked that far because of all the different attractions, all the different lights, all the different buildings, all the different restaurants, right. where we can make a trek of it and, and really capitalize off of whitewater rafting. Well, That's the long-term goal and plan that we've stated from day one. Correct. And, and as you already know, I've sold it to the American Legion. I am now the junior vice commander, and come June, I will move up to be the senior vice commander. Well, you can help and us get more money. So we are doing a lot of things by me selling it to the American Legion because the way I sell it is that it's going to be the biggest veterans park in the southeastern United States with an American Legion post sitting in, directly in the middle. And hopefully, as we grow and make this money, we're going to be able to put a tomb of the unknown in there, and, uh, so and have things. the eternal flame that's going to burn consistently. But the key factor is is that we work with the state so that the state uh, maintains the care of the park, because we want yeah, the exactly. tourism side to come in, and because the American Legion won't be able to handle maintaining that park. Yeah, and that's the thing too, and that we've talked about in some meetings whether the city has to do it, but the idea part is to get the state because as you stated, I don't think it's, in, it's a, another city that has something like this that's correct. that I know of, particularly with the reference, with the reflection pool. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, we have 18 acres up there. We're, this is designed to have on, be about on 10 acres. Right. Uh, and you know that could ebb and flow depends right. on you know uh, which way this thing goes because the thing about it it has to be an economic impact and it will be an economic impact but the thing that we want to do is to create that environment where it's, it's, it's hard to push back against veterans and, and we got to get everybody to buy into that and the city can't fund seven million dollars but we can have partnership like you, right. like you, uh, we have with you all. But then it's also a way that rec people who in our community can help pay homage to these veterans to help us build this. And that's the long-term goal. And, and, and you know, one of the other selling points that I sell is that we have Fort Benning here who have graduation every Thursday and we have Whitewater and we have the zip line. Yes, so when people come to graduation, they're going to not only come to Whitewater and the zip line and to exactly. see the museum, uh, the infantry museum and the, uh, the naval museum, but now they're going to come to see the Veterans Park. And it'll be, it's a great and, place uh, for them to see and positively things A good friend of mine and yours, General White, who helped build the uh, infantry museum, is coming on board to help us. So, well, uh, it's going to take a partnership, yeah. as we, we, we've stated. And Leroy, talk about the other part also, the wall of heroes oh, yeah. that we want to reach out to because as I stated, is if, if anybody signed on the dotted line mm -hmm. of any of these branches of services and they made it back by the grace of God, they are still a hero because they were willing exactly. to pay the ultimate price knowing what the cost would be. So. Well, well, and, and that's great uh, that you brought that up because we do want veterans to help us build this park and what better honor to, than to have your name on that wall and all we're asking for is a $20 donation, put your name on the wall and even if you don't have 20 and you come and say, uh, Leroy or, or Mayor Lowe, I still want my name to go on the wall, we're still going to find a way to put your name on the wall so that when your grandchildren or your friends come here, they're going to say, I want to go to the park to see my granddaddy's name or my dad's name uh, or whatever. And uh, the other side to that is that we have a veterans uh, cemetery here, Fort Mitchell National yeah, exactly. Cemetery. So people, once we start letting people know all the things that we have here, they're going to want to go out there because every uh, May and Memorial Day, we hold a ceremony at the National Cemetery. Yeah, so exactly. we want to continue to do that and we've been encouraging uh, Columbus and everybody else to 
not worry about putting on a Memorial Day program because the National Cemetery holds one every year and we're getting it bigger and bigger. So in May, during Armed Forces Week, uh, we can look at doing our big ceremony Memorial at, at the, at the, uh, uh, the park. So you no, know, we have one week that's called Armed Forces Week. Yeah, and that's the week of Memorial, right? The right. Week no, the week before. Yeah. So right. we want to do all of that stuff leading up to the Memorial Day program in the National Cemetery. So we want to give all of us. We do have one Medal of Honor winner in our National Cemetery. And we always want to make sure people understand that we have a Medal of Honor winner there. We have a lot of Purple Heart recipients here in, in the Chattahoochee Valley alone. So we have a lot to be thankful for. A lot of men and women uh, go out each and every day on active duty today and serve their country and put their lives Pay on the line. Pay the ultimate price. Pay the ultimate price. And we just want to uh, say thank you to them. Thank you to their families who thought it was not robbery to let their children or their husbands serve. And that's why we do here at the American Legion, we serve veterans. We help veterans to get their benefits. We teach them how to navigate the VA system to get their doctor's appointment. So whatever a veteran needs, we do. And we also have one of the things that I'm most proud of is our children and youth program. And for our children and youth program, what we do in school, the child don't have to be a veteran's child. All they have to do is be a child yeah. because we are looking at our future. Our children is our future. So we work our children and youth program from all rhetorical to boys state, girl state, American Legion baseball, which is another thing we're trying to bring back here, American Legion baseball, because we give out a lot of scholarships in baseball as well. So we are working on getting that back here. And once we get all of those things aligned in the park, I think we're going to be the Well, we run. can we can uh, we can certainly be an icon, but let me say this Leroy if you don't mind. It, Leroy mentioned that we're trying to engage all veterans, particularly the veterans from the state of Alabama. Uh, the last figure we looked at, you had over 400,000 veterans. And I know this is, you know, wi wishing for a wide margin, but we're hoping that if we can get half of those veterans just to give them $20, then we're talking about $4 million. So we, we got a way that we can hopefully help generate this. Uh, we have uh, some of our people from the city economic development is trying to work where we can come up where we can reach out statewide uh, so we can pay homage but also to help us raise some money uh, to help build this park because I tell you it would be an icon for this I think for this country and I know for this state unless you know otherwise and I haven't traveled to all the different places you have been in the military but I would think that this park would be one of a kind it will be. There is no other like this one. And, and, and we just need to get it right. Get it right. And it's going to take money, and, I, and we don't want and need people to be negative about it. We need positive people to help make this happen uh, so we can get some dirt turning. We have the land, uh, it, and I think it could be one of the best things that could have happened in Phoenix City. Yes, it can. And uh, we're going to start putting out, uh, get with the television station and our brick pavers that where you can uh, get the information off of the television about our brick pavers so that if you want to buy a brick and put your dad's name on it, your granddad's, or your name if you are a veteran, you can buy a brick or a square to go in the walk in the Veterans Park. It's going to be a beautiful, a beautiful park and we plan for the dining room to seat over 250. And so when you go into the activity hall after you finish eating, if you lease it uh, uh, for a night to have an extravagant party, you're talking about seating for over 500. When you got your band up there playing and a yeah. uh, uh, DJ or whatever, it, you, it will be a place where you can hold anything you want to hold here in Phoenix City, Alabama. Well, I think it's a great vision on our part. We just got to keep working and listen. We have gotten frustrated. Uh, because, you know, we, we want it to happen now, and the key is that we need engagement, and we, we want this city and this community, both communities, to realize that, hey, we, we, we need each other to help make this happen, because being a veteran is one of the most outstanding examples that a person can give to be willing to give it all for the sake of others. Right. And that's why we need to 
continually pay them homage, and that's what our goal is. Okay, well, thank you. Now, I want to give you my phone number, so if you have any questions about Veterans Park or veteran issues, period, you can contact me, Veteran Views, Leroy Davis, Jr., 706-718-4440. That is 706-718-4440. You can always reach me there. That's my cell phone, and it rings all the time anyway, and I don't mind answering it to help my fellow veterans uh, get what they need and to help us build this beautiful veterans park with the American Legion post sitting right in the middle. It'll be the only one of its kind in this country, and we'll be the done it first. Okay, Mayor, we want to thank you for coming thank to our you. show. My pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure having you. My pleasure. You. Let's uh, make it happen. Uh, hopefully, we not hopefully we are going to make we're it happen. We're going to get it. And we and, and and citizens, you are going to be proud of your mayor, of your American Legion post, and we want to keep doing what we're doing. And should you want to volunteer and you're sitting at home with nothing to do, come on up to the American Legion and see us because all we do is work for our veterans and our communities. Thank you for tuning in and look forward to seeing you again next month on Veterans View.